Hello, and welcome to part eight in our study on hell. In this lesson, we are going to answer the question, how does a loving God send anyone to hell? The answer is really quite simple. A loving God does not send anyone to hell. A holy God sends unholy people to hell. A righteous God sends unrighteous people to hell. A just God sends sinners to hell. Not a loving God, but a holy God, a righteous God, and a just God. A loving God provides a way for sinners to be forgiven and to escape the judgment of hell. That's where God's love comes in. See, we <clears throat> oftentimes we look at God as He's love, he's this, he's that, he's holiness, he's righteousness, he's justice. He's, and we look at him as little compartments. That's not God. God is one, and all of his attributes work together. Is God loving? Yes, but he's not just loving. He's also holy, he's also righteous, he's also just. He's also a God of anger. He's a God of mercy. He's a God of forgiveness. He's also a God of vengeance. They all work in unison, and they all work in harmony. It's not just we pick one of them out and apply it when we want to apply it. And so we start to, when we start to think about hell, we say, well, let's not focus on the righteousness of God. Let's not look at the justice of God. Let's not look at the holiness of God. Let's just look at the love of God and the grace of God and the mercy of God. And so therefore, we will not go to hell. Wrong. When you want to look at salvation, you can look at the love, the grace, and the mercy and the forgiveness of God. God does exercise it. But that does not mean that people will not go to hell. What it does mean is God has provided a way to escape hell. If you refuse to accept that, then a holy, righteous, and just God must send you to hell. See, us in our self-righteousness, we want to do things our way all the time. Always. We want things done our way. We don't want to do things God's way. So we sit back and say, I want to go to heaven, and this is how I think I ought to go there. And I think I'm good enough, and I'll set the standards, and I'll set what should be, and I'm going to call upon your mercy and your grace and your forgiveness, and you need to apply it to me, and you, this is how you need to apply it to me, and this is when you need to apply it to me. When I, got, when I die, and I stand in front of you, and I really see that you're real, and that you are a holy God, well, then I'll ask for your mercy and your your grace and your love and your forgiveness and I expect you to give it to me. That's not how it works. God's love, mercy and grace and forgiveness are this side of judgment, are this side of death. It gets, you do it now. God says you do it now, not later. Look at the love of God in action. Let's get back to the love of God here. John 3 verses 14 through 18. Probably the most well-known verses of scripture. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Christ is going to the cross. He's lifted up on the cross. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Remember through all of this that the word believe means trust. Believe doesn't just mean that I intellectually say in my head, okay, there is this person called Christ. I acknowledge that he existed. That's not what the word believe means. It means to trust in this person. Commit yourself to this person. <clears throat> that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Here's the love of God. Listen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes or trusts in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Note when Jesus Christ came here and went to the cross for us, it wasn't for condemnation. God didn't send his Son here to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved. He is now in his love offering salvation to all sinners. If you don't accept that, then later the condemnation comes. That's what hell is. Now is the time. Reject that salvation, and then condemnation is guaranteed. 
He goes on, it says here, He that believes or trusts in him is not condemned, but he that believes not is condemned already because he has not trusted in the name of the only begotten Son of God. He that trusts on the Son has everlasting life, and he that believes not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides upon him. There is the love of God in action. God says, I have provided a way for you to escape. I sent my son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross, to take the penalty and the punishment for your sins. If you will believe in that, if you will trust in that, if you will receive that, now, now I will forgive all of your sins. God says, today, if you will hear my voice, harden not your heart. Now is the day of salvation. While you are living and breathing on this planet, you hear the gospel. God says, my love is being poured out. It was my love that sent my son. It was the love of Jesus Christ who was in agony in the Garden of Gethsemane, knowing he was going to the cross. It was his love and obedience to the Father that he went to that cross to pay the price for your sins and for my sins. God says, you want to see my love? Here's my love. You believe and trust in my son who died and paid for your sins now. If you reject that, if you reject what my son has done for you, if you reject the gospel of Jesus Christ, then a holy, righteous, and just God will judge you for your sins. If you won't let Christ pay for your sins, then you're going to pay for them. Somebody's going to pay for them. A holy, righteous, and just God must punish sin. It has to be. There is a penalty to sin, and it has to be paid for. God, in his mercy, in his grace, in his forgiveness, and in his love, says, my son will do it for you. I will accept that as payment for your sin. But you must believe that he did it. You must trust in that. You can't trust in yourself. You can't trust in your own works. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. You can't earn your way. You can't work your way. Salvation is not by works. The wages of sin is death. The soul that sins, it shall die. You can't work your way out. That's not the payment for it. And even if you could work, you couldn't be good enough. God is perfect. None of us can be perfect. How many works can you do to warrant perfection? You can't. <clears throat> it doesn't pay the price. It's like the murderer standing before the judge and says, I'll go sweep the streets for the next 50 years. He goes, that's not the penalty. That doesn't, it doesn't take it away. So it's not there. So you want to see the love of God? How does a loving God send someone to hell? A loving God doesn't. A loving God, God provides the way for you to escape that punishment. Refuse it. Reject it. You pay for the sins yourself. Then a holy, righteous, and just God will send you to hell because that's the just punishment. There's a story of a man who... <clears throat> He was living in a, in a town there, and, a, and a, the rains were coming, and there was a flood. Big, big flood was coming. The river was rising, <clears throat> and the water starts to rush down the street. And as the water's coming down the street, you know, his neighbors come by and say, Hey, Bob, you know, come on, let's go. The, you know, the rain's coming. The, the, the river's overflowing its banks. we got a flood coming in here. You better get out of here. He looks at him. He says, Nah, don't worry about it. He says, I'm praying. I'll t I'm talking to God. God's going to take care of me. And he stays. So now the water starts rising a little bit higher and higher. Now it's up to the first floor. And he's up there now, and uh, he's, he's kind of, the water's getting pretty deep. He's standing up on the second floor, and some rescuers come by in a boat. And they said, hey, Bob, the water's coming up on the thing. You get into the boat. Let's go. Because uh, you're going to be, get yourself in big trouble. Don't worry about it. I know what I'm doing. Everything's going to be all right. I talk to God, and God's going to take care of me. Don't worry about anything. Now the water's really come up. Bob's up on the top of his roof. Okay? Nobody's coming by in any boats. Nobody can walk by. He's on the top of the roof. In comes a helicopter. Bop, 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 bop. You know, they call down on the thing. Hey, we're going to drop a rope down to you. Clean on the rope. Climb up the ladder. Because if you don't, you're going to die. You know, the river's still coming up. Don't worry about it. I talk to God, and I'm praying, and God, I'm just, you know, God's going to take care of me. I'm going to be all right. He's going to rescue me. 
What happens? The helicopter leaves. So the water keeps rising. Boom. Washes Bob off the roof of his car, off the roof of his house. He's dead. So now he gets and he's standing before God. Now he's at the judgment. And he looks and he says, God, what happened? What are you doing? I talked to you. I prayed to you. I asked you to deliver me. And now I died and I'm standing here in front of you. God looks at him and he says, what are you blaming me for? I sent you a warning. I sent you a boat. And I sent you a helicopter. You rejected all three of them. Don't blame me. Blame yourself. Now it's a bit of a comical story. But there's reality to it. People are going to stand in front of God one day. And they're going to hear the sentence of death put on them. They're going to hear that they're going to be sentenced to hell forever. And they're going to say, God, what are you doing? How can you do this to me? How can this happen? I, 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 I tried to follow you. I tried to do good works. I tried to do this. And God's going to say, I sent you my son. I sent you my word. I sent you my messengers. I sent you the gospel. You rejected them all. I tried to rescue you. But no, you wouldn't listen. You wanted to do it your way. And your way isn't right. And now your end is going to be destruction. So, where are we looking at? How does a loving God send someone to hell? A loving God doesn't. A loving God now is ready to forgive you. He's ready to cleanse you from all of your sins. He's ready to show you compassion and mercy and forgiveness. A loving God right now, this side of judgment, this side, while you're alive and on earth, a loving God is ready, willing, and able to rescue you from eternal judgment. The question is, will you accept it? Will you accept God's way of rescue? Or are you going to sit back and say, no, I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to get out of this jam myself. I'm going to set my own standards. I'm not going to accept the rescue that's coming. I'm going to, I want to be rescued my way. I want to get to heaven my way. I'm going to do it my way. If you refuse, if you refuse to accept what Jesus Christ has done on the cross for you, God says, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. The scripture says there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we might be saved. There is no other way of salvation. You want to choose another way? You want to go your own way? You want to be like Adam and Eve and say, I don't need to listen to God. I'm going to do what I want. You will die in your sin. And then when you stand before God, a holy, righteous, and just God will judge you for your sin. The challenge to you now is the door of mercy is still open. You want to look at the love of God? Accept the love of God now. For God so loved the world that he gave you his only begotten son that if you will believe and trust in him, you will receive eternal life. If you disbelieve, you are already condemned. It's very simple. It's very plain. Will you submit to the Lord? Will you yield to the Lord? How do I do that? In our next lesson, which is the final lesson that we're doing in this series, we're going to answer that question. What must I do to be saved? How is it that I can escape the penalties of hell? That's what salvation is. That's what Christ came here for. He came to save us from the penalty of hell. He came to save us here from the eternal punishment of hell. You listen to a lot of the preachers and especially the televangelists today, you think you're getting saved from a poor life, you're getting saved from aches and pains, you're getting saved from poverty, God wants to buy you a new car, God wants to just, you know, give you uh, your life that's all bubbly and percolly, he wants to take away all your problems, and he just wants to, you know, just pay off all your bills for you, and just give you a happy and peppy life bursting with love kind of thing 
If God wants to bless us with nice things, fine. But that's not what Jesus Christ went to the cross for. Don't ever cheapen the cross of Jesus Christ. Christ didn't go and suffer on that cross so that I wouldn't have any physical pain. He didn't suffer and go through the penalty of hell and the judgment of God so that I could have more money in the bank. He went to the cross so that I wouldn't have to die and go to hell for eternity. That's what we're saved from. We're saved from the wages of our sin. We're saved from eternal punishment. Why in the world would you reject that? Why would you do that? Listen to the next lesson. Listen to the final lesson if you're not doing these in order. Let God speak to your heart. Remember, he says, today is the day of salvation. Don't harden your heart. Because if you do, you may never listen again you may never get another chance. I trust that you'll let God speak to you and that you'll surrender yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless you.